Good afternoon everyone and welcome to our webcast, Mentoring Maximise Your Career Potential. Today I'm joined by Irene Grant, Executive Coach and Mentor, who will talk about her experience as a mentor. And we will then hear from Chris Murray, Director of PLD, who will give a short demo of our mentoring platform. If you have any questions during the webcast, please use the online function to submit these and we will come back to them at the end. I hope you all enjoyed today's webcast and I'll now hand you over to Irene. Good morning, everyone. Um, as Heather just said, my name is Irene Grant. I'm a fellow of the Chartered Institute of Bankers and a member of the Committee for the 2025 Foundation. Um, after a career in banking, I now run my own small business as an executive coach and mentor and consultant. And I'm also on the board of the Edinburgh International Book Festival. So I'm here today to talk about mentoring um, what is it? Um, why would a mentor or mentee want to, to get involved in it and how to do it well? So this first slide is one for, um, for the pub quiz or Trivial Pursuit. Um, the earliest mention of mentoring um, was in the epic Greek poem by Homer called The Odyssey. And this is Odysseus who was heading off to the Trojan War. And so he asked his oldest and most trusted counsellor to look after his kingdom and to educate his son while he was away. And the name of that counsellor was Mentor. So what exactly is mentoring? Um, Heather, are you going to flick on the slide? Thank you. Um, You'll hear people use different terms for different things. So, so let's start by, by getting clear on, on what I mean, certainly by mentoring. So it's a relationship between two people um, with the overarching goal of professional and personal development. There's a couple of terms that I'll use throughout. So the mentor is usually um, an experienced individual and they're looking to share their knowledge, their experience, their advice, with a less experienced person known as the mentee. And to help, I really like this informal um, description by John C. Crosby. It says, mentoring is a brain to pick, an ear to listen, and a push in the right direction. And I think that's a neat way of summing it up. So mentoring is it's not the same as coaching, it's not the same as counseling, and it's not the same as training. So, You'll be relieved here, I'm not going to read this whole slide, but really just focus on that mentoring column to draw out what is mentoring. Um, it's very much a well-rounded view of the whole person. So it's not like um, a specific skill that you're working on. So when you go on a presentation skills course, it's much more rounded than that. It's very forward looking. Um, we're looking at if the mentee is at A and the mentee wants to get to B, how do we get her or him from A to B? So it's very forward looking and very action focused. And the overarching goal, as I said, is to support that mentee in their career and personal development. There'll be interim goals along the way for particular sessions, but that's the overarching goal that you're, you're looking towards. It can be quite a long lasting relationship if the two individuals click um, as a personal example, when I set up a new business in 2018, um, one of the individuals who stepped forward to, to mentor me um, was first my boss back in 1999. The agenda for the mentoring relationship and for each session is usually set by the mentee in discussion with the mentor. We're going to come back to that point later about where the responsibilities lie within the relationship. So, if you're thinking of becoming a mentee, why would you want to do it? So mentoring offers um, support and challenge for you to work out um, where you're trying to head both professionally and personally. Really importantly, that's in a safe, non-judgmental environment because the mentor has no agenda other than helping you. So that's how it can differ from say a conversation with your line manager or even with your partner, your mentor is there simply to support you and has no other agenda. It's confidential and that's key. It's confidential in both ways, i.e. 
neither the mentor nor the mentee should be talking to others about what's discussed. And it's a sounding board where the mentee can really bounce ideas, um, discuss options, decide on the actions they want to take in a safe space. The mentor will be quite different from the mentee and will think differently. And therefore that will help the mentee think about things differently because they're getting different insights, different perspectives. Um, a great knowledge and a great source of knowledge and experience that the mentee hasn't yet had for the mentee to tap into. And it, it can help therefore sort of short circuit the learning curve. Can help the mentee build a network, which is really useful down the line. It also gives the mentee somewhere um, where you can practice your communication skills in an environment that's safe and not judgmental, as I mentioned. And through all of these things together, hopefully that will give the mentee increased self-confidence and also a help with motivation. That's my view of it, but don't take my word for it. We've got a video here from Vincent, who's one of the scholars for the 2025 Foundation. It might take a moment to load and to unload and there'll be a recording late, later, but hopefully you'll get Vincent's views here. Before having any experience with mentors, I did not really consider it as an opportunity. However, after getting involved with my mentor, I can say that the lessons I learned have shaped the way I approach decisions. Throughout this process, I came to understand that the mentor is there to help, but also to learn from the mentee. The mentor must understand where you are at this current moment and also where you want to be. And then they can be supportive and even instrumental in guiding you there. I found that having someone like a mentor can increase your confidence. When making a decision or asking for their opinion, they're there to listen and you can soundboard with them and have unfiltered conversation. Mentors can share their experiences and offer advice, and that reduces the steep learning curve that comes when trying something new, such as a new job or a promotion. As a student, one main concern that I had was about the career I would take right out of university. My mentor assisted me by laying out several options that I can consider, and I found that to be really helpful. Mentors can open closed doors to various opportunities and allow you to use resources and networks that you may not have access to. Networking was an area that I wanted to work on, and having a qualified professional with years of experience behind them was an excellent way to learn and develop those essential skills. I discovered that having someone to keep you accountable and on track can be very helpful and also encouraging. Often, we find ourselves in need of support and reassurance, and it takes a different informed perspective to help us realign our focus to our goals and ambitions. I consider mentorship like a signpost, which you can refer to when facing difficult scenarios or questions in your life. To get the most out of a mentoring relationship, be unafraid to ask questions. And remember that the mentors are there to help you, but also to learn from you as well. Mentorship is a process I would surely recommend for everyone to consider, regardless of where you are in your career, as there is always room for growth. And I think that a mentor can definitely help to achieve that. So just while we're transitioning um, back to the slides, hopefully from what I've said and, and more importantly from what Vincent said, you can see why there's a whole myriad of ways in which a mentoring relationship can benefit the mentee. But it's important that the mentee plays the right role in the relationship. And a key thing to understand is that the mentee really owns the relationship 
Um, and there's a few tips on this slide here about, about how to be a great mentee and therefore make the most of the relationship. Um, first up, I would say just remember that your mentor is a, is a volunteer. They're giving their time and their effort and their energy for free. So respect that. And at the outset, as we'll talk a little bit about later, agree any boundaries that, that there needs to be around time or availability. The mentee really needs to take responsibility for your own learning. Um, the mentor is not there to, to nag you if you haven't done something. Um, that's really up to you to own. And the classic saying, you know, the more you put in, the more you will get out. I would say from experience, the more open and honest and trusting the relationship, um, the greater the impact. So work hard to develop that trust, be open about what you need from the mentor, and also be open to giving feedback around whether you're getting what you need or not, or what needs to be done differently. Be realistic in the expectations that you set with your mentor. And into that, I would put things like um, the time that you are able to give to it. Don't overcommit so that the relationship becomes a stress rather than the, the positive relationship that it's meant to be. I'd recommend that the mentee come to each meeting with a prepared agenda. Again, we'll talk a little bit more about that later, but that really helps to make good use of your time and the mentor's time. And take appropriate risks. What I, what I mean by that is this is a great time to get out of your comfort zone a little with the input from the mentor around maybe challenging yourself. So, so be open to taking those risks. And finally, um, recognize your mentor's limitations. The mentor is not going to know everything. They're not going to have been through every experience that, that you're going through. Um, so if you both don't know, then you can work through something together. Having talked about it very much from the mentee's point of view, um, what's in it for the mentor? I would say the biggest thing is the personal satisfaction that you as a mentor get from seeing the mentee develop. Um, seeing them fly and knowing that you've played a part in it gives you a, an immense feeling of, um, of satisfaction and happiness. I'd also say maybe controversially at the moment, we all seem to be surrounding ourselves with people who are very much like ourselves. Um, the mentee won't be like you. And in, because they're bringing different experiences and different perspectives, I think that can be a real breath of fresh air and give the mentor challenge and stimulation. As Victor mentored, um, I've never been in a mentoring relationship where I haven't learned something from the mentee. Um, I mentioned here diversity and inclusion, but you can learn so much because of their different experiences and their different ways of thinking about things. And in the same way that I said, it's a great place for the mentees to practice their skills. It's also a great place for mentors to practice skills, um, listening skills, coaching, asking open questions, all skills that are really valuable um, elsewhere in your, in your work life. So let me maybe answer this by saying what the role of the mentor is not. It is not to tell the mentee what to do. The role of the mentor is very much to help the mentee take ownership of their own learning and professional journey. So encourage the mentee to take responsibility. Listen, the old adage of you've got two ears, one mouth for a reason. Ask them questions to get facts, but mainly to make the mentee think. Um, offer the different perspectives that you're bringing to the relationship. Offer support and encouragement. This should be a really positive relationship for the mentee. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't provide constructive feedback and challenge. For the bottom ones I've listed here, this is still not about telling them what to do but it is about providing advice and guidance. So draw on your own experiences and share those. I don't mean in a tell war stories of, oh, when I were a lad as a cashier using a quill pen to balance the books. I mean, saying, I tried this and it worked for me. You might wanna try it for you or you might wanna try something different. Give advice on career development. 
as a mentor, you've probably been there, done that, and that helps the mentee learn. Um, and I think provide information on things you think would be useful. So share articles or books that you've read and you think the mentee would, would benefit from or podcasts that they might listen to. Um, my mentors still do this for me and I find it really useful to find different sources of, of inspiration or ideas. And potentially give your mentee access to your networks. Um, but do this with care and with responsibility. So let's assume we move to a, a post-COVID world where we're allowed to meet up again and there's networking events. If there's one that you think would be useful or interesting to your mentee, take them along as your guest, but then look after them. Don't wander off to, to talk shop with, with colleagues you bump into. Introduce them to people, make them feel welcome and part of the event. So how do the mentor and mentee get to this place? A uh, supporting, nurturing, challenging relationship. And I'm hoping you all know who this is. So it's really important to get it right from the outset and set the foundations that are gonna stand the relationship in good stead as it evolves. Remember, it's a professional partnership, adult to adult, the mentee owns it. So therefore the mentee arranges meetings, sets the agenda, follows up on agreed action. But at that first meeting, you want to do things like establish the ground rules and the way of working. So ground rules would be things like agreeing it's 100% confidential in both directions, um, agreeing um, how long you want to meet for, when you want to meet, um, setting out that you both want that open and honest relationship and how are you going to make that happen. For ways of working, you might agree how you're going to stay in touch between meetings, um, how the mentee is going to bring the agenda, are they going to share that in advance with the mentor, all those sort of details of logistics. The mentee at that first meeting is going to set out, hopefully, their personal and professional goals. But candidly, they're probably going to need help with that. This mentoring relationship is an opportunity for them to explore those goals. So those may well need help at the outset, and they may well flex as you go through the relationship. In terms of agreeing expectations of each other, these are things like um, how much support does the mentee want versus how much challenge are they comfortable taking? Um, are there personal boundaries? So topics that you don't want to discuss or maybe you know simple things like, please don't contact me at the weekend. I protect that time for, for my family. And spend time getting to know each other. You might want to swap CVs, but this is more about deeper stuff, um, understanding what's important to both of you, um, what are your values, and therefore, what does that mean for, for how you work together? A few quick tips for making the meetings work, and by work, I mean productive and effective. Um, reflect before the meeting. What does the mentee want to get out of this particular meeting? That might be looking back at the previous session, um, what insights came from that, what you've reflected on since, what actions you took, what happened. It might be something super current. This has just come up and I need your help to work out what to do with it. Or it might be about working towards those goals that you've already talked about. I find it helpful if the mentee communicates this to the mentor before the meeting, simply because it gives the mentor time to think about it. Might be you've got an interview coming up, you want some help with interview prep and maybe even role play it. If you give the mentor a chance to think about that in advance, it can just mean that the time that's spent in the meeting is really productive. Give the meeting priority it deserves. I keep to times and dates that you have set for it. And I'd suggest you take 10 minutes beforehand, both of you, just to clear your head of all the day-to-day -day noise that, that's going on so that you're in the right frame of mind to make the most of the meeting. Um, you wanna be curious, you wanna be open. 
So just give yourself the best chance of that by clearing your head. And at the end of the meeting, review and reflect. Did you achieve in the meeting what you were hoping to achieve? If not, what do you need to do differently next time? Like all good relationships, you need to work at it. So remember the mentee owns a relationship and is responsible for their own development, but treat the relationship with respect. So you agreed preferred ways of keeping in touch between the formal meetings, use them, keep the dialogue act active, don't go quiet for months at a time. Check in regularly is the balance right of support and challenge. Review how you're doing against the goals that you set at the outset. Share feedback on what's working for you or not working for you. And this should be an enjoyable, positive relationship. If it's not, then talk about it. Um, so what might all this look like? This is all theory. Let me talk just a little bit about one of my mentoring relationships. And that might give you an idea of, of the type of things you might talk about and how the relationship might evolve. So I first met Katie when we both worked at the same bank. We went to a client meeting together. We clicked and after the meeting, Katie approached me and asked if I would mentor her. At that time, um, what she really wanted to work on was um, making progress in her career. She worked in a product specific um, department. She felt that she wasn't progressing as fast as she liked. So the, the mentoring relationship at that point, we talked about things like what was her, um, what was her profile within the bank? How might she have really productive one-to-ones with her, her boss? How might she put her hand up for projects that would both stretch her, give her new knowledge, but also improve the way that she was seen. Um, she got the promotion that she deserved. And then our relationship focused much more about how she makes a success of that role that she'd moved into. Um, I then left the bank. Katie approached me to ask if I would pick up mentoring with her again. And by that point, she'd identified that she wanted to move overseas, ideally on a secondment. And she knew that was something that I'd done and wanted to, to learn from my experiences of, of how I went about that. So the mentoring relationship focused on things like um, how she might use her network to identify opportunities. Who did she need to be telling that this was what she wanted to do? How might she prepare herself in terms of having the right skills? for an overseas move. Then an opportunity was advertised. And so then the mentoring focused on interview preparation and in fact, role playing the interview to, to help her prepare. Happily, she got the role. So then the mentoring moved on to how she'd make a quick start in that. And this was her first really senior leadership role. So we spent a lot of time working out um, what kind of leader she wanted to be and how that would feel for her team, how the stakeholders would see that. And then most recently, we've been mentoring around a very happy development because Katie's had a little girl. And um, so we worked together both pre-maternity leave and post-maternity leave to make that as smooth and enjoyable uh, a transition as possible for Katie and also as um, useful as possible for the team. So you can tell it's been quite a long running relationship off and on as Katie's needs varied. Um, I think she would say it's helped her be successful. Um, and I've really enjoyed seeing Katie succeed. Um, and I've also learned lots from her over the period of that relationship. So it might seem a little weird to talk about a long running relationship and then talking about the ending of a relationship. But this happens in all mentoring relationship. And to me, it's really important that it's handled well. Mentoring relationships come to an end for a whole variety of reasons. It might simply have run its course and achieved its objectives. That's great. It might not be working for a whole bunch of reasons. 
our circumstances might have changed. One of you might not have the time to give to it anymore. So just end the relationship professionally. Be honest, be respectful, provide feedback, get feedback and, and move on. And that moving on for the mentee might be finding a different mentor because you now have different needs. Um, it might be actually you're feeling really self-sufficient and well-supported in other ways and you don't need a mentor right now. Um, but my opinion, as you might guess, is that it's always great to have a mentoring relationship to give you support, depending on what your needs are at any time. And I just want to finish with a little bit specific to the Charter Banker Institute um, about a couple of ways in which mentoring is important to the, the Institute. So we have a, a program, a more general program, for want of a better word, where our younger, less experienced um, members can look to be mentored by our more experienced members or fellows. And that is great for both mentees and mentors for all the reasons that, that I've just gone through. We also run um, a mentoring program under the 2025 Foundation. In case any of you don't know, Foundation was established by the Chartered Banks Institute to support talented young individuals who aspire to a career in banking, but who might not otherwise have access to it for financial or family um, reasons. And the foundation supports those young people financially in their studies and taking the professional banking exams. But we also provide mentors to help them through, through the whole journey. Um, and we are always looking for um, fellows or members of the Charter Banker Institute who'd be interested in giving these young people, scholars as we call them, like Vincent who you saw in the video, giving them the mentoring support that they need. So with that I'm going to hand you back to Heather who will then hand you to Chris to talk about um, how we support those mentoring relationships with a mentoring platform. And I'll be taking questions, as will Chris, at the end of his presentation. So thank you for listening. I hope you find that useful. Thank you, Irene. Um, that was really helpful. It was great to hear about your own experiences as a mentor. And I hope that everybody listening found that useful. I'll now hand you over to Chris, who will do a short demo of our mentoring platform. And as Irene mentioned, any questions can be asked at the end. Over to you, Chris. Thanks, Heather. Um, hi, everyone. So, yeah, I'm just going to take you through a, a brief um, intro to the mentoring platform, a um, little bit of a demo to show the roles of the, um, the mentor and the mentee and how to use the software. I'll just start here on the um, Chatter Banker website. So there are a couple of ways to access the um, mentoring platform. One is through um, your route to Chatter Banker. Um, so from the menu there, um, you can um, just do it. Um, yeah, access mentoring, um, and you've also got um, another access point here um, on the, the volunteering hub. So um, from the website, you can click through to the um, platform's homepage. So this is what the um, the homepage looks like. Um, you'll see from the home page that our, um, the program is introduced on the home page, a little bit of a description in terms of what the program is about, um, a couple of case studies. We've also got the more information area where um, there are a number of um, videos that you can um, access just to give you an overview of mentoring and how to get the best out of it. And then once you've um, understood how the program works, you can create an account. And it's fairly straightforward to create an account. So you create an account direct from the homepage. Um, you can be a mentor and a mentee from the same account and email address. Um, you just need to um, give your name, surname, membership number, and the email you want to use on the program and create your password. I've already created an account. So just to take you through the software, um, I am going to be a mentee. 
Um, so I'm just going to have a mentee account. What I'm going to show you is um, how to um, progress as a mentee, uh, how the proposal is sent, the mentoring proposal is sent through the software to the mentor, um, then we'll quickly move in as the mentor and see how that's accepted and what happens next. So if I um, log in from my account, so as I log in, um, I have this um, I have this onboarding area. Now um, the with the onboarding area, um, you've got again um, a few videos here um, to start to introduce the key skills of a mentee, um, and that will certainly re reinforce um, some of um, the points Irene was making in her presentation. Um, how the software works. So a, a brief overview in terms of how to use the software and get the most out of the software features. Um, there's a separate um, PDF brochure um, around the um, Chartered Banker mentoring program, um, what's specific to the um, Chartered to, to Charter Banker. Um, then there's also another PDF that um, takes you through an overview of mentoring. So once you're um, happy with that and you feel you're um, happy to progress you create a profile now the profile is really simple um, to complete uh which shouldn't take you long at all and it, it serves two purposes one is you'll see in a second um the profile will help you um profile will help you um with the mental searches so the information and the choices you make on the profile will bring back the most appropriate mentors for you. Um, but also the information you place on the profile will, once you send a proposal to a mentor, um, the mentor will get that information. So it's um, worth spending a, a bit of time on this, particularly a personal statement. The rest of the profile is just um, drop downs really but certainly thinking about your personal statement, once that goes to the mentor, it will help the mentor um, understand how best they can support you. So if I just quickly complete this, I'm gonna be a member, so a manager, uh, say I work with Lloyds Bank, um, and I'm in Manchester, um, I can add a, um, a profile picture at this stage. I'll save that. Um, I can choose which program I want to be on. So um, I've got two choices here as a mentee, um, the main Chartered Banker program or the 2025 foundation program that um, Irene referred to um, if I'm eligible. Um, now I'm just gonna choose Chartered Banker in terms of my program. Um, I'm gonna then start to think about the areas I'm looking for support from my mentor. With. So I'm going to choose career development, I'm going to choose networking, uh, work-life balance, I'm going to choose building self-awareness in terms of skills, There's a separate set of, um, of skills to choose from as well. And um, as I said, um, it's worth putting um, some time into your personal statement, but to save us a little bit of time on the um, demo, I'm just going to put... Statements. So I complete my profile, check I'm okay with it. Then I save that. Once I save the profile, um, the platform will bring back the mentors available on the software who best meet my um, profile um, choices. So the platform will do a little bit of the heavy lifting for you in terms of mentor searches. Um, you can make a few changes here, so you can, without going back to your profile, you can um, remove areas, add areas, um, in terms of um, areas of help, skills, you can, if you request exact matching, then that will take the areas you've placed on your profile and it will search for someone who exactly matches the, um, the, the skill um, areas in their entirety. So you've got some choices to um, change your search results. But when you're happy, you can start to look at the mentor profiles. So um, I'm going to choose um, 
Margarita. She's come up to the top of the searches. Now, this, this is all dummy data, so we're not going to see anybody we know, know here. Um, so um, Margarita's um, profile wouldn't ordinarily be in Latin, so we would have a good understanding in terms of where Margarita feels she can support us as a mentee and the skill areas that she has chosen and feels comfortable um, supporting a mentee with. At this stage, as a mentee, we can ask a question. Um, so there might be something on the profile we've got a question about before we send the mentoring proposal. Um, we can also edit our details. So um, I may um, see something in the mentor's profile that I feel is particularly relevant that I want to call out um, and so make my proposal to the mentor even more relevant. Um, so I can do that here. Um, when I'm ready, I send the request. Um, the mentoring platform works on a number of um, uh, alerts, basically, so you don't have to stay logged into the platform. Um, the mentor will now get a, an email into the email inbox they've registered onto the program with to let them know that a proposal has arrived. Um, so if I now... Um, in here... So currently, we have um, we have created our account. Um, we've completed um, our onboarding. We've completed our profile. We've done a mentor search, and we've sent a proposal to um, to our mentor. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a view from the mentor end. So. Um, I'm going to log out of the platform and I'm now going to look at what the mentor sees. So if we log out, I log in as Margarita. So similar thing, um, Mar Margarita on the other side of the software um, has completed her profile as a mentor. Um, now, she will have had a message from the software to let her know I have sent a um, mentoring request. Um, and as she logs into the software, that request is waiting for her. Um, now, um, she clicks on the call to action button um, in terms of um, a next step. And the mentor has two choices. So, um, you know, the mentor could all, always decline the request. That, that shouldn't be because they're too busy or they've got, um, they're supporting enough mentees. Um, but I may have misinterpreted the, um, the mentor's profile and how they can support me. Um, so the mentor um, could, you know, decide that they, they can't really help me. They have to give a reason for that and send it back to the mentee. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to accept the proposal though. We're going to accept the mentoring proposal. And when the mentor accepts the mentoring proposal, um, again, um, similar to um, Irene's presentation, the software is designed to be mentee-led. Um, so um, the platform um, allows the mentee to take responsibility for their learning. Um, and that starts with setting up that first meeting. So the mentor gets a message to let them know that the mentee um, will set up the first um, conversation. But while they are waiting, so the mentor has um, access to a number of resources. Um, they're split into stages, so preparing for the first conversation with the mentee, and they're, you know, very much, um, you know, cover some of the things in, um, in Irene's presentation. Um, so um, how to make um, mentoring relationships work, dealing with things like confidentiality, clarifying roles. You've got your first conversation checklist here as well. Um, and then the resources progress to building momentum in the relationship, helping to focus on goal completion, listening skills, questioning skills, how to give effective feedback. Um, and then finally, when appropriate, how to, um, how to bring the relationship to a close. So whilst the mentor is preparing um, for the mentee to set up that first meeting and get started, we're just going to go back to our original um, mentee account. 
So as a mentee, um, I have had a message um, to let me know that the mentor has accepted my request. Um, I um, again take first call to action. So in terms of the next step, I, I've got this um, initial message that's encouraging that encourages me to set up that first meeting. Um, so it's important for the mentee's point of view to make sure that um, um, they let the mentor know that they're serious about taking this forward. So you can set up that meeting via email can send a message direct from the platform or you can arrange a meeting from the meeting planner in the software. And if for any reason, you know, um, your request is no longer valid and um, you've changed your mind, then please, um, you know, it's appropriate to, to, to then withdraw that request so um, the mentor is not left hanging on. Um, but when you're ready to proceed, you've set up that first meeting, the mentee is exactly the same support resources as the mentor, except their resources are designed for their role as mentee. The mentor's resources are designed for their role as mentor. The mentee has a few other resources to help them get started as well. So you've got here um, uh, the chance to have a little bit of a think about where you are in your career, um, the uh, um, you know, your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, your threats. You can start to use the G-Star model um, to think about um, goals you want to set for the mentoring relationship. Um, and then you can set smart goals within the software, share those with your mentor so that you both know what success looks like in terms of um, goal achievement for the relationship. Um, so just show a couple of other things. Um, as Irene mentioned, you know, it's always good to have a mentor. So um, if you successfully um, complete a mentoring relationship and you hit another um, challenge um, at a later date that you need support on, you can always go back into the find a mentor um, function and connect with another um, member um, of, the, of um, Chartered Banker and um, those relationships will then build within the software here. And um, you've got your messages, you've got your mentors details, you've got your tools, including your meetings. So from the meetings area, you can set up your meetings. You can save those, your meetings will build, you can take notes and actions on your meetings download your, uh, the meetings you set up to your calendar and pop those in your calendar. Um, you've also got your learn more area. Um, so here um, we have um, some of the videos um, from the software journey, but also a number of um, additional um, PDFs and supporting documents that you can reference that have been placed on, on bank, um, Chartered Banker that are specific. Uh, you've got your help area. So here you've got your FAQs. You can contact the program administrator if you need to as well. So I know that's um, just a, uh, you know quite a quite a quick run through of the platform, but hopefully that gives gives you a good idea of um, how the software works, some of the software features, um, the fact that you know you've got resources there to help you try and get the most out of the mentoring episodes so i'm going to i'm going to pause there just so that we've got um, some time for questions so um i'll hand back to heather now and we can hopefully get into a bit of a q a that's great thank you chris um so if you've got any questions please just submit these via the q a function um, and if you specify who your questions for that would be great as well um, so I do actually have one here, and this question is for Irene. So you touched a little on reverse mentoring. Could you explain how this works? Yeah, um, so I, I explain mentoring as most people understand it. The mentor is the more experienced person, sharing advice, wisdom, knowledge with the less experienced person. And whilst I said the, the, the mentor often learns from the mentee, um, reverse mentoring actually formalizes that. So the person being mentored is the more senior manager and they're being mentored by the more, more junior. Um, there was a brief trend of it around kind of um, when technology first became a thing 
And so there was this perception that youngsters could help us oldies understand how technology might be useful to them. Um, but thankfully it's moved on from that and it's used in a whole variety of organizations, particularly where the, the end customer looks a lot more like the mentee than it does the mentor. And so the, the younger, less experienced colleague is often sharing insight into um, what her peer group or his peer group are looking for in terms of career, what her peer group, his group are looking for in terms of products and innovation. Um, it was certainly used at the institution that I worked at to um, around diversity and inclusion um, to help some of the more senior, um, to use that phrase, pale male stale leaders, um, understand what the experience of the organization was like for colleagues who were from a, a different ethnic or religious background, um, help them understand their life experiences and what that might mean for improving the way that the bank catered for their careers. That's great, thank you, Irene. Um, I have a question here for Chris. Um, what if I can't find a mentor with, with the specific skill set I'm looking for on the platform? Um, if, if you can't find a mentor with um, um, the specific skill set, um, one, as, as I showed on um, the platform, you have got the ability um, to search the bank of mentors. So in the first instance, I'd use that, I'd have a bit of a search around. Um, you may feel, you may find somebody who um, isn't an absolutely exact match, but you could use the question facility just to start a conversation going and find out, you know, where that person can support you or they may, you know, um, um, feel that um, they can cover your full um, set of needs. So you've certainly got that as your first option. As a second option, you can get in touch with, um, with Charles of Banker. So you can use the um, messaging process. You can contact the um, system administrator. And then, you know, either um, they may know of something you've missed. So they'll be able to um, point you in the right direction to a mentor who would be able to help you who's already on the platform. Or alternatively, you know, um, go out to the wider membership to see if there's um, if there's a sp specific skill set missing, whether we can get some supply of um, those mentors back on the platform. So you've got a couple of options there. Great, thank you. Um, for Irene, how would you say COVID-19 has impacted mentoring? Mm. Um, interesting question. I guess, obviously, a lot of it's had to move online. Um, and with, as with most things with COVID and moving online, that brings both benefits and challenges. I guess the benefits is that people have historically thought of mentoring as something you have to do face to face. That's how you build a connection. Um, in reality, you can do it online. A lot of the clients I mentor professionally are, are, are not based in Edinburgh where I am. Um, and it brings the opportunity that you can be easily mentored by somebody that's not local to you, but has the skill sets that, that you're looking for, which might not have been as easy pre-COVID. Um, but there's still opportunities if somebody is local for you to, to meet up, depending on where you are and what um, tier of lockdown you're in. Um, some of the, the youngsters I mentor, for example, quite like doing walking mentoring. So we'll, we'll go out for a walk and talk. And sometimes that's just nice in terms of, um, it makes people think more flexibly. I find if you're taking them away from a work environment or taking them away even from a sort of face-to-face -face environment, just wandering along, getting a bit of fresh air, I won't say sunshine because it is Edinburgh, but getting a bit of fresh air um, and enjoying nature, it, it sometimes opens up the way that people think. So I think there's still things that can, it can be made to work absolutely, even in the, in the current um, era of restrictions due to COVID. That's great, thank you. Um, for Chris, um, if I am a mentor on the platform and I'm too busy or have enough mentees, is there any way that I can take myself out of the searches so that no one else will contact me? Yep, yep, yep. So um, as a mentor, 
um, once you're in um, the platform, you'll see on the top toolbar, um, you've got the option to edit your account. Um, so once you go into your edit account um, function, um, you've then got the ability to take yourself out of searches should you, um, you know, hit the capacity you've got for um, mentees, should you um, be in a, a busy period with work where um, you know you're not able to take on another mentee. Once you once you do that, doesn't doesn't impact any existing relationships you've got in place. It doesn't you know um, freeze you from the platform or anything like that. It just means that you come out of the searches so, um, for a while until you're ready to go to go back in. Great, thank you, Chris. Um, I have another one here for Irene. Um, as a mentor, is it difficult when you see that your mentee is not taking your advice and possibly heading for a bad outcome in a situation? Um, I guess there's a professional answer and a personal answer. So um, personally, yeah, yeah, it can be. You never want to see your, your mentee um, have a bad outcome. But professionally, you, you have to remember that the you're not there to tell the mentee what to do. You're there to, to help them make their own um, decisions. And, and people learn from getting things wrong just as much, if not as more than, than getting things right. So I think it would be more wrong to, to stop them. You can point out or you can ask, you know, what do you think the upsides of your decision are? What do you think the downside risks of your decision are? Um, but ultimately, they must make that decision for themselves. Great, thank you. I think that might be it for questions at the moment. I can't see anything else coming in. Um, so I will draw this webinar to a close. I'd just like to thank Irene and Chris for providing such an insightful webcast today. And of course, to all our listeners, thank you for joining. If you are a member of the Chartered Banker Institute, today's webcast will count as part of your ongoing CPD. Please remember to record this via the logbook in the members area of the website. Once again, we would like to thank you for your participation and thank you for listening.